Now, doesn't this look like a great room? Great, great room at Lake Forest is where we are. Our cameras in our little corner have been here before, but we decided to come back and see the finished product in action today. Actually, we're going to start a series of programs for and about seniors. And I, it dawns on me that since, well, Calvin, you're almost there, but I am a senior, and so I'm very interested in things like this. When I was on the radio years ago, I spent a lot of time visiting the area nursing homes, talking about alternative care for seniors. As they grow older, they have to make plans about where they're going to go and what they're going to do. So we were very interested when we first heard the concept of Lake Forest. We spent a lot of time with Margo Zeglis. Mm -hmm. Our cameras traveled around this area. I even did a couple of television uh, commercials way back in the very beginning. And I wasn't sure, and I'm sure many people in the North Country were not certain how great a success this place would be. And so we came out here again, thanks to the good graces of Carmen Car Carpentier. How are you? Good. Great to have you here today. Well, thank you very much, as we're here before a nice, warm fireplace, brisk, cool temperatures outside. Tomorrow it's going to be in the 50s, but our audience won't know that because they may not see this until summertime, I'm not sure. But thank you very much for having us here today. How long have you been here, Carmen? Uh, I've been with Lake Forest since before the building was opened. The building opened in December two, two years ago, and uh, we've been up and running since then. We actually had residents moving in the morning that we opened up. Did you really? It was exciting, yes. It yeah. was a busy place for a long time, yes. and I got an interesting alternate view of the place as we walk or jog up and down the bike path, the walking path which is between Lake Forest and Lake Champlain. Mm -hmm. And I look watch some of the residents out there in the summertime watching us go by say, who are those crazy old people walking down the bike path? But it's a it's a beautiful piece of property. Yes, isn't it, it is. Here? It's a multi-million dollar view and it's a gorgeous piece of property. Um, when they sit outside, like uh, apparently you saw them last summer, it kind of looks like a cruise ship with all these lounge chairs out there, <laughs> suntan lotion and lemonade <laughs> and turning with the sun to get a tan. Not not a bad life, I'll no. tell you that. We uh, decried the fact that Plattsburgh Air Force Base closed way back when and weren't quite sure what would happen to all the properties. And it's been interesting for Calvin and I to, to visit the old former uh, Plattsburgh Air Force Base properties and see how things develop, see what new businesses come in. But to see this idea called Lake Forest germinate from an idea mm -hmm. Actually, there was one in place up in the Watertown area, right? Before yes, this one? yes, we call that a, a sister facility. Uh, the concept, management concept is the same. The building layout is very, very similar with some modifications made specifically for Lake Forest. But this one, this one seems to be growing as we speak. Yes, growing all the time. This fall, we um, finished building 12 new duplexes out on Nevada Oval. Uh, I have one apartment left, so if anyone's interested. Oh, oh boy, go uh, and fast. then exactly and we do have a waiting list for the duplexes and for the apartments we've already started a waiting list so if people are interested they can get their name in and when something's available we'll give them a call I think some of our viewers ac across the North Country might be aware of what Lake Forest is, but let's just explain the concept sure. for those who don't. Okay. Lake Forest is a not-for-profit retirement community for seniors over the age of 62. It was intended to fill that niche for seniors who make an average annual income of between twenty and $25,000 a year in retirement and have equity from the sale of a home of between seventy-five dollars and, let's say, $150,000. Prior to Lake Forest, there was really no place in Plattsburgh for them to go and live in carefree retirement living, and that's exactly what we offer here. And the people who live here can be quite independent, can't they? Oh, they are very independent. We have a two-time gold medalist in snowshoeing. We have golfers. We have... Um, Golfers, uh, bowlers, I mean, these people are out and about in the community, driving, doing their sports, going to their churches, their synagogues, having family in, traveling to Kenya, Madagascar, all over the world. So uh, age is just a number. Boy, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I keep telling my wife that. <laughs> it certainly is. It's really quite a nice place. How many... How many um, 
How, how big is this area? Okay, the main building has 44 apartments, one and two bedroom wow. apartments with this central dining area, the activities room where the bridge class is going on right now, a greenhouse, we have guest rooms for out of town visitors, we have a library, a computer center, a nutrition center, and in the summer the deck is open for people to sit out and look at the lake. And then we have garages for people who would like to use the garage for their car and are still driving. So um, maybe we could go around and see some of that later on during this tour. Oh, well, I hope to do that. We'll be here for a little while interviewing people and looking over the facility. For those people who are accustomed to watching our program, they saw it as it was unfolding and mm -hmm. as it was being built. We saw some of the apartments, but now it's a... It's uh, pretty much a finished product that is in the main scheme of things. Our, the eyes of our camera have been looking out toward Lake Champlain, and when you said million dollar view, you're not kidding. I mean, this is, this is like a country club. This is uh, I can't beautiful. believe I work here every day. <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you come to get this job in the first place? Well, my background is in um, hotel and restaurant management with a degree in nutrition, and um, that's pretty much how the ad read. And Margot called me up and asked me to apply for it, and I did, and so here I am. So you've been yes. part of it from the very beginning. Yes, when we were doing construction in the summertime, my office was a construction trailer on the site nearby. So, now, yeah. I, are you telling me now that there aren't very many openings left? There is one apartment left. That's it. Until more building? Uh, well, the main building is done. The 44 apartments are it. And the duplexes, any future construction there is to be considered by the board sometime in the future. We do have 18 homes out there, beautiful, beautiful homes. And um, as people leave, those would become available also. And then there's the possibility of construction possibly down the road. You know, that's, been that's not a bad position to be in at I this know. point uh, yes. after only two years, is it? No, no, uh, we've done extremely well, yes. Well, pretty much the place speaks for itself. And it kind of sells itself because I think when the families come in and see the amenities and the services that we offer, they know that their parents and the residents themselves who are looking at this facility get a sense of um, well-being, a security. The services are extensive and it really does offer carefree living for a retirement lifestyle. To come and go as you please, to participate as much as you'd like to, or to you know, stay in your apartment and watch the lake, you know. Do you have, I, I never looked. Have you got a website? Yes, we do. do. It's um, on lakeforest.org. See, I should have looked last night. I normally do my homework, mm -hmm. but I was looking for some hermit from the Civil War era by the name of Sam Smith down in a place called the Gulf, which Calvin and I are going to talk about later. So I was doing a whole different kind of okay. research. <laughs> so we're going to take a look around today, meet okay. some of the people, and find out what Lake Forest is all about. Okay, great. Do you want to meet some of the residents now? We'll do it in just a moment. Okay. We're going to have a round table discussion right here. Where, what is this room called, Carmen? Is this the it's, library? It's a library, yeah. It looks like a library. Mm -hmm. I've always wished I had a library in my house. I have little, little bunches of books here and there and boxes of books, and I wish I could display them like this. I'm a book lover. I love books. I recognize some of the people around the table. Peg Byrne, I know you. Well, I've seen you around for a long time, too. Yeah, well, you know, some of us just get to be fixtures. Yes, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been at Lake Forest? 150 years. 150 <laughs> years. Well, then you remember all the stuff we're going to talk about here. <laughs> what? This, you, you know, this is historic ground that we're on here. I mean, all this land around here is historic. We are so fortunate to have so much history around Plattsburgh and Clinton County. And the history around this ground is almost hallowed ground, right next to, the, next to a very world famous cemetery here uh -huh. and this military installation that's had a military presence since the very beginning of our country. Yep. But it's too bad we don't have a few ghosts walking through the Maybe halls here. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Peg, tell us a little bit about your life here in Plattsburgh. Were you born and brought up here? Certainly. Were you really? Yes. Where were you born? CV Hospital. 
The old CB hospital, yeah. where the gray nuns were there yes. then. Sister Mary. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. We were talking about A.B. de Grand Prix a few minutes ago. I don't he think the there. camera was on, but that's where he started. You bet. Yes, Isn't he did. that neat? Uh -huh. So you always lived here? Yes. What a great place to... I think it's pretty special. That's why we stayed. You know, it's a funny thing. It, it, it draws you back. You try, some people try to leave, and they get about as far as West Plattsburgh, and <laughs> the elastic band tugs them back. Well, I know I've raised a huge family, as you know, and a lot of my kids would love to come back. Some have gone and come back. And others come back as often as they can just to see what it was like. Because I do. I believe it's a, a special place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It well, let, let's move to my left. Now, if, if we could show his feet, he might have the vestiges of snowshoes on because he's world famous as a snowshoe racer now. This is a guy who uh, claimed a spotlight, he and his wife, on one of our programs couple of years ago in our Sable Forks, Mr. and Mrs. Leonard Snow, how are you? Oh, I'm feeling great. How about you? I'm doing great. I was so <laughs> pleased when I heard you had moved into Lake Forest. That was a big move for you. Yes, it was. Well, we're uh, not going to be staying here permanently. It's just, uh, just for the time being. Hey, if we just stay for the afternoon, that would be <laughs> fine for me. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. Oh, it surely it. is. It surely it. is. It's We're enjoying place. it very much, buddy. For those people who've watched our show in the past, they know uh, who the snows are and how big a fixture they are in uh, All Sable Forks. Mm -hmm. They've been involved in everything from, uh, for the last uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> couple of years, from all of his wonderful naval experiences up through working with the school board and, and interested in local history. And that was, one of the, that was one of the most fun television programs I've ever done. Uh, 30 years with the fire department. And with the fire department <laughs> and with historical buildings. Not to mention a couple of rounds of golf out there too, right? Oh, uh, yes, and I've got my golf clubs right here. <laughs> I should have known. we got to watch him. He'll be putting through the cemetery there before we know it. You know, a lot of our viewers want to know about this snowshoe thing. I mean, I'm sitting there at my supper table one night, and I hear... Leonard Snow winning the snowmobile race. I said, wait a minute. When I'm Leonard, what? Not, not snowmobile, snowshoe race. When I'm Len's age, I'll be lucky if I can get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and this guy's out in a snow. How did you get involved in that snowshoe well, race? Snowshoes are new to me. Um, um, my, I, I borrowed the snowshoes from my daughter because she's into snowshoes. Oh, she is? But uh, uh, for this race, for this race, I borrowed her snowshoes, her ski poles, and I would, they let me walk. I did my practicing right here, great place along, along the, uh, 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 along the back <laughs> area. You didn't go up and down the halls here anyway. Yeah. So that's how I got, I got into it. The Fitzsimmons guys, Nick, uh, the world famous Iron Man, and his father. Yep. Nick is 28, uh, his father is 50. They came to me, uh, um, and, uh, and, and you're older than both of said, them put together and half of their other he kids. Said, he said to me, Len, um, you walked 18 holes on your, on your, uh, on your uh, 90th birthday, okay? And uh, if you can do that, you can do the snowshoe race. Then they talked me into it. That's how I got into it. <laughs> you certainly are an inspiration. <laughs> You've always enjoyed the outdoors. Right. Yes, I have. always enjoyed the outdoors. Nothing's more pleasing to you than walk around uh, nine holes or 18 holes on the yeah, golf it's course. It's great. It's just wonderful. And I'm going up there to St. Hubert's, and I'm going to do it again this year. And how old are you oh. going to be this year? I mean, oh. I don't want to intrude, but it, it will be it will be my uh, my uh, 90 first. Birthday. Is, isn't that decent? What do you think of all these shenanigans? <laughs> At she least you so. could have done was put a pair of snowshoes on and stand on I the know. side and watch them. I maybe should have, but Corey, she I didn't. Some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my, my, most of my good friends are just a little bit off center, Len, so I want you to know. 
Hey, you look terrific. I heard that last year you had a little... You st stepped a little backwards, didn't you have a little stroke there? He said there? I did. I don't ever remember it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's part oh. of the thing. She, I wish uh, she I could forget all the bad times I've had, too. <laughs> she, but, lo she lost her memory. But you're looking great. Yeah, I lost oh. my memory. She knew who you were. <laughs> she knew where you were, and she knew that she wore the pants in that family, too. And don't you ever kid yourself. Well, I, you're right on that. I'm so glad you're here. And it's so, isn't it great to be... 90 years old and this vibrant, a lesson to all the folks in the North Country who might want to find a rocking chair with a motor on it so they don't have to push it back and forth. Uh, we, for those people who do enjoy the outdoors, what better place is there to oh, live than this North Country, beautiful. huh? It's beautiful. We talked to, we talked to this couple, uh, well, that must be two years ago That's now, isn't it, Calvin? Two or three two years, years ago. Over two years. Huh? He was only 88 when we talked about He was only 80? <laughs> <laughs> Almost three years ago. And we saw his bottle collection, and we just <laughs> yeah. had such a good time. That's a great place. And we talked a little bit about prohibition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about those guys trying to throw the bottles over down behind your house. <laughs> and the kids going back to see which ones didn't break. You can't fool me, buddy boy. And who have we got over here? Florence Callahan. Florence, how are you today? Well, I'm better known as Callie. People call me Callie for Callahan. I'm fine, thank you. And well, you? Well, I'm going to call you Callie then. Callie, that's right. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in southern New Hampshire and grew up in Manchester, New Hampshire, which explains the Boston accent, why I call Common Common. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I came to Plattsburgh in 1951, which was 50 years ago this summer, and I taught in campus school at the college, taught seventh graders and then eventually eighth graders, taught common somewhere along the way. Did takes you kids, really? Takes kids somewhere along the way. So all and, these kids uh, that turned out okay, it's all your fault, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you came here as specifically to teach? In the campus school, that's right. I was hired to teach in the campus school, either a nursery school, an upper grade, or a college. And I really was not equipped to teach anything except upper grade, so fortunately they gave me an upper grade. And I taught eighth grade, ninth grade, did a little coaching, coached a lot of kids. Tom Bove is one of my boys, you oh, know, well. Tom down to Westport. So you're going to drop a few names here, yeah. Tom, oh, of course, well, of course, you know, why you not? ask me, I know an awful lot of people in Plattsburgh. I know a lot of people here. Marie Bissell, I had her son, she's here, and who else did I have? The, the, uh, 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 Paul Pearson and Martha's, their children, uh, when they were noise, so forth. Then in 1980, no, 1968, I moved over to teach education in the college, and I taught the college students. And as a result of that, I went out into the schools and got to know so many of the teachers because my students would be in the different schools. I've had a wonderful experience. Love Plattsburgh. Taught for 48 years, 34 of them beautiful? at the college. Yeah. And uh, taught everything from first grade to graduate courses somewhere along the way. And she was the uh, first resident here. Were you really, Cal? The first uh, resident here? Uh, I was one of the first. I came in in December 99, was, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the charter residents, yes. Yeah. Charter, there you go. Oh, yeah, with Marco and Coleman. But you didn't bring your snowshoes. You could have been in I that know. rain. I used to watch Len snowshoeing outside my window, and I thought, wow. <laughs> so who is that guy? That can't be the mailman. He, that can't be Santa Claus. He doesn't have a sack on his back. I've started to play pool, which I'm finding is very exciting. We've got some good pool players here. So I decided that would be fun, and so I'm, I'm learning. I have a lot to learn. How about that, Len? You play pool? I never did, no. Well, well, I tried it a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Seniors take up all kinds of new interests. There are things to do. My mother started bowling when she was like 85 years old and went in the Senior Olympics and called me up, and she said, I won the gold medal. I wish she was still alive. She'd be up here with snowshoes to, to race Len across the back 40 here. Let's, you know, it dawns on me that some of our viewers may not be aware of the campus school concept. What was the idea of well, having a campus when school? When we first came to Plattsburgh, it was called the Laboratory School. Yes. And it was, then was only Hawkins Hall. And the campus school, Laboratory School was part of that. And all of the students were education students. And all of them had to do some participation in classrooms. So all of them spent at least one, semester, one quarter in the campus school. 
and this is why it was originally called a training school back in 99 yeah, when they had the centennial, I wrote a book on the history of the campus Did school. You really? And that was quite fascinating. I interviewed all kinds of people. Most of them are gone now, which is unfortunate. Many of them had attended campus school back in uh, when it was the old normal hall. And some of them, uh, Bob Booth and, and uh, Helen Booth, were originally in campus school as little kids. And then their kids were in campus school later. And another one was, um, oh... What was their name? They had three generations of them. I think it was the Allens, yeah, the Allen family. Three generations went through campus school. It was a, it was a private school uh, run by the state. And most of the children in those days were enrolled at birth because it was very difficult to get in. Uh, well, I know. I tried when I first came up here to get my first, uh, my first son in, and it was a lost cause. So every one of my... Every one of the 15 kids that Kay and I have raised started school at Broad Street School. Uh, no, it was very difficult to now, get campus in. campus school was ultimately at Sibley Hall, wasn't well, it? Well, ultimately they no. moved it over. They'd always been talking about building a new one, and finally they built Sibley Hall, and they sort of changed philosophy at that time. And uh, it was in 66, 66, wasn't it, they built uh -huh. the new campus school. Uh, we opened the new campus right. school. And uh, over the years, it... Uh, state began to withdraw its support from campus school. And in 1982, 1982, the state closed all campus schools. And so Sibley Hall became part of the education department. And uh, speech and hearing and some other things I think were in there. But a very fascinating experience. Well, you came here in 1951 before Plattsburgh Air Force Base as we know it and knew it even existed. Yeah. When you came here in 1951, there was a college here called Champlain, Champlain College. College. Sure, I knew Champlain College. We and nowadays, if it weren't for our little program and a reunion of these wonderful people who came yeah. back, when you mentioned Champlain College, people would say, oh, that school over in Burlington. Oh, well, Not well, true. Yeah. We had. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I remember when they, the state gave it over to the air base. And I remember we took our car and drove all around where they built the new uh, runways for the airplane before they opened the base. It was fascinating. And up and down the runways, and it was fascinating to see it develop. But uh, That's one of the great virtues of growing old. You get to remember all these things. Somebody says, see that building over there? I wonder where that came from. And you say, I was there when they turned over the first. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a pleasure for me to have moved back here and made this area my home for the for the last 40 some years because as a as a young person I worked on construction and helped to help to build this Plattsburgh Air Force Base bef before it was Plattsburgh Air Force Base way back in the mid 50s so we go full circle and here you are living on the property in the year 2002 I know it's unbelievable isn't it huh unbelievable I retired in 86 which is 16 years ago and that doesn't seem possible I've gotten involved in literacy volunteers and doing English as a second language so I've gotten to know quite a few people through that but living here is great because as you said, being older, <laughs> we remember a lot of things. And as we sit at the table at night or at noon, we reminisce a great deal. It's How does it feel to be the youngster at the table, Carmen? <laughs> the other day we were talking about cowboy movies, remember? Hoot Gibson, Ken Maynard, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gene Autry. Well, listen, now you're talking to a guy. He, at the drop of a hat, he would shut the camera off, set it down on the corner, and talk to you about old cowboy movies. This is the biggest fan of old oh, cowboys and old cowboy <laughs> movies. Every and we, Saturday afternoon when we were kids, did you used to go to the cowboy movies on Saturday afternoons? Once in a while. Oh, we went all the time. That was a big deal. Bet you I can't. Bet you can't. Brothers, I, I didn't have any brothers. <laughs> I didn't have any brothers either. I had only a sister, but lots of kids in my neighborhood. You know, we all traipsed to the movies. But you can't remember what a movie <laughs> ticket cost when you were a kid, can you? Oh, um, first it was a nickel, then it was a dime. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Saturday for the matinee, we tried to walk in backwards and yeah, thought they'd think we were right. walking out. Well, the guy looked at me and he, <laughs> he grabbed me by the back of the neck. <laughs> I did it. Say, hey, what's times. your name, kid? Something else very interesting to me um, is um, I was five years in the, in the U.S. Army. In 1942, I came to Plattsburgh and enlisted in that building right up there. 
Did you I'm, really? I'm, look, I'm looking Why at Why did I right? say Navy before? It was you were in the Army. No, Army. Army. Yeah. The building is right there that I enlisted in, the wooden one. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah, the old brick one? Yeah. 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 Right the, straight the, over. The, the wooden building. Yeah. 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 It was a barracks building. It was a wooden barracks building. The 26th Infantry was here. I've got my enlistment card in, in my room, uh, and um, the with uh, the date and and uh, and the name of the officer who enlisted me. Do you really? <laughs> yes. This, this is going to be a can you top this table talk here. That, that's amazing. Amazing and wonderful. Well, you see, right here is uh, our Clinton Community College. Um, just this side of Clinton Community College is where the other like, school that used to be here, the Catholic School of America. And I remember that because the trolley ran out there and I used to ride up and down on that trolley. The trolley did, not very far from where we're sitting here, the trolley ran back and forth all the way out to the bluff. And the Catholic school for girls was very famous right up until they built Cliff Haven. And those buildings were still there when you moved to town. That's right. Some I remember of the last when they buildings built, were I remember still they there. built Cliff Haven, yeah. I, I didn't know too much about the Catholic school, but people used to talk about it a great deal. But then I remember they took it and built Cliff Haven, and people started moving in Cliff Haven. I remember that very, very well. But one thing, the top you, my uncle, <laughs> one of my aunt's husband, uh, trained here in World War I. He was training in Plattsburg at the base. Yeah. Well, this was a, as we, here, our know. viewers are, are very aware of the Plattsburgh idea. Yeah. ROTC started right here. I've got all the original newspaper yeah. from the Sunday Times pictorial edition in my home that show all the pictures of all the training here, uh, all the, the barracks in the, uh, all around the Oval, and all the training up along the Saranac River, mm -hmm. and all the training that was done, the Plattsburgh Ideas, and they turned businessmen into officers right here in Plattsburgh, New York, and uh, it was, became a very, very famous place. Before we leave the subject of old-time cowboys, because it's near and dear to Calvin's heart. I should mention that <clears throat> we've had some pretty famous cowboy stars that came from this area, including a man whose name was Tom Tyler from the Witherby Port Henry Mineville area, whose real name was... Vincent Markowski. <laughs> Vincent Markowski. And we did a whole program about him, talking about his old movies, and he was very famous in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and didn't die till the 50s, did he? Yeah, 1953, and the reason I bring that up is because you were talking about cowboy stars and because re just recently, as we're taping this in, in March, uh, I was watching television last night and one of our programs on the local cable system was about the, the guy who owned the property of Frontier Town, and we were talking about Tom Tyler. And when the program opened, I had some cockamamie black cowboy hat on that looked like it had been <laughs> rejected from a Tom Tyler movie in 1933, and my, my wife fell right off the couch. She hadn't seen that program before. Look at that hat! Come on, get that hat off! She's hollering at this guy who was me sitting next to her. Get that hat off your head! Tom Tyler was, uh, uh, but movies were made right up and down Lake Champlain back in the early part of the of the 20th century, yeah. But that's, that's fun to remember that there was a trolley car. They, were, they dug up some of the tracks uh, about 20, 30 years ago, and I got a couple of the spikes to put up on my mantle at home because that was a big part of Plattsburgh history. I used to go to school on it every day. My sister and I got on it down on Macomb Street down here and went all around the city, all the way up to the old, Platts oh, the old building of Hawkins, which yeah. before it burned up, we started school up there. Did you? And uh, every day we went out. We discovered it was wonderful. It had steam heat under the under the uh, seats, oh. so it was nice and warm oh. every Mostly day. In the winter time. And we discovered that if you brought your yellow crayons and your red crayons and you dropped them through the holes in the radiators, <laughs> <laughs> made wonderful rivers all over the floor. <laughs> Now, see, if you, if you had been a boy, you would have had little pieces of Limburger cheese and tried that, and it would have been a whole different ending to that story. Well, it was almost the ending of us. They I mean, didn't like it much. <laughs> we had a great time with that. That was fun, huh? Riding on the trolley and, and 
For day. those people who may go into the into the Calvin Castine hometown cable archives and drag out this interview that we did with Len, he talked about how you'd get a, a little bit of money and get on the train or on the trolley and head to Plattsburgh on a Saturday, didn't you? I, right? was, I was working as a yard boy for the Henry Rogers family and their son Spalding was a classmate of mine in high school. And um, on a Saturday morning, I'd be out there maybe mowing or raking or doing something, cleaning the hen house or something, but his fa Spalding's father, Henry Rogers, would come out and hand Spalding a $5 bill. Wow, that's and, money. And we would go down to the uh, train station in all Sable Force and get on the passenger train, which ran twice a, twice a day in those days, come to Plattsburgh, jump on the trolley and ride back and forth between Cumberland Head and, and up here uh, where I'm on this end. I don't know if I'm pointing the right way, but it doesn't matter. All day until we got tired, or, or at noon, we would get off and we'd go to the Witherill Hotel for lunch in a magnificent <laughs> dining room. And I probably had on a pair of of uh, pants with a patch and a seat or something. My family was poor in those days. Yeah. And um, we'd sit there having this great lunch on it, and I'd take a sip out of the finger bowl and the horrified Spalding. <laughs> 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 but, you know, th these memories are so important, and it is so wonderful to be able to sit and talk about them and share them. And this is the greatest thing about growing old. If you can do it this way, it's just perfect. Yeah, and maintain a certain quality of life and, and have enough faculties to, to conjure up these memories. I was talking, uh, I work as a victim's advocate in the probation department as a crime victim's advocate. And we were sitting there and one of the supervisors came in yesterday and said, Gordy, I remember once when you came to Meadowbrook Nursing Home in, let's say, 1976, and you interviewed a woman there who was 105, and her name was, and she couldn't think of it. Now, Calvin knows me. I can't, you know, I can meet somebody 10 minutes ago and forget what their name is, and I said, Anna Mottville. And she said, Anna Mottville, how did you come up with that? I said, I don't have a clue. The woman was, was born and brought up in Lake Placid, and I asked her when she was a young person in the late 1800s what she knew about Plattsburgh living in Lake Placid. She said she never knew there was a Plattsburgh until she was 18 years old. Because in those days, people didn't travel more than 20 miles away from their, from their home. But we do, even younger people like Carmen, can understand our fascination with these old stories, especially about trains. What was there about the old steam trains that attracted us, huh? They brought one through when the late Sid Spiegel, who did the news, remember news of the day with Sidney J? They brought a steam train through tr town when Sidney was still doing the news on the local radio station. And I was, I was transported back to my childhood. He's down there reporting, and I got a microphone underneath the train because I loved that. The old steam trains, weren't they great, huh? Well, you know what? We, uh, this just, I could sit here and all day and reminisce, but we're gonna take a look around Lake Forest and see what happens, and I can't, re I can't wait till we get the next two foot snowfall. Not that I especially like snow anymore, just so I can come out and watch Len going up and down between here and there. <laughs> Thanks so much for chatting with us today. You're very welcome. Great to see you. You ought to stick around and watch the trains go by. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, oh, right out here. Right out the back. Right right out, not, very right far out the not very far away. Between yeah. us and the lake. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's fun, Mel. Well, maybe, maybe, really? Mm. <laughs> maybe we'll get lucky and have a train go by. Let me, let me call up D&H and see what we can arrange. Huh? <laughs> We're going to take a look around Lake Forest. Good. Oh, you're going to kill yourself then. <laughs> <laughs> We're underway. Carmen, what, where are we? This isn't the lunch room. No, this is the exercise room, and it actually gets a lot of use. Um, right across from our greenhouse, we've uh, put these exercise pieces in for the residents to use, and there is a lot of use down here. Ben and Polly are here right now. That, that's great. From where, where are you from, Ben? Oh, man, I'm from 
from everywhere. From <laughs> South Georgia, Georgia Tech, Pacific Ocean, World War II. Rambling wreck. Is that what you said? New Jersey. <laughs> everywhere. Well, we're great. So how did you end up in Plattsburgh? We've got two daughters that work for G GP. Ah. And they're out here on West Chasey and Beekman Town. Well, so you've been everywhere. This is not a bad part of the country. Oh, it's very nice. Where, where, where were, tell me a little bit about your World War II experience. Where were you? Uh, oh boy. Aberdeen, Maryland. Savannah Proving Ground, Illinois. Fort Bragg, Presidio of California. Australia. Sydney, Brisbane. New Zealand, New <laughs> well, uh, Central Queensland. Milne Bay, New Guinea, Hollandia, New Guinea, Lady Philippine Islands, Subic Bay, Philippine Islands. We're getting it all. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> the Tangus, Philippine Islands, Luzon, and uh, Army of Occupation at Osaka, Japan. Wow, were you, were you in the Army? Yes. Unbelievable. For how, for how long? Sheltering ammunition. 42 months. 42 months? That's yeah. pretty long term. She waited. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> she waited. And she's still walking and she's not getting anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, we had a lot of fun. Did you really? Yeah. Lived on a lot of bases. Yeah. Saw a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, after getting out of the service, I worked for Hercules Incorporated. Oh, you did? And uh, worked for them for about 40 years. They made all kinds of things, including explosives. Oh, yeah. In fact, I helped work on the Polaris II missile. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> so, you see, life is nothing but a dream. <laughs> Sounds like a few of your dreams came true, and you ended up in Plattsburgh, New York, so that can't be all bad. Well, Carmen's a real nice lady. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> She's a real doll. As long as they serve you lunch once in a while, it can't be all bad, right? No, no. <laughs> That's very nice here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying hello from the distance over there. You're an inspiration for all of us. I think Carmen ought to get right on the back with you, don't you? Turn that baby right up to about 15 miles an hour. This is very nice. A, a lot, you got, you got a, a rowing machine. You got a treadmill. You got a whatever that thing's called. I have no I'm idea. Not sure what it's called, but it's, 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 pull -ups. It's, it's better than a hobby horse. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. They got a couple of nice exercise bikes, and even got a card table over here. Yep, and poker is big here. Poker is big here. Very right big. Penny Annie poker. Serious huh? poker, and then not so serious. Oh yeah. boy! I saw the bridge. I saw the bridge instructions yes, going on. Yes, yes, in our activities room, and right across the way we have our greenhouse, which gets a lot of use. Uh, it's a nice place to meditate, sit, and look at the lake, grow the your, uh, seedlings for the vegetable garden well, that we're going to start. Let's walk and come talk, on. and we'll go and yeah. take a look at it as Calvin comes out the door. I'll grab the cord and hope that he doesn't trip over it. You can keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Here's more of our million-dollar view. I remember coming in here just after it was built, right, Calvin? Yep. Taking some pictures of it, so wow-wee. Yes. And a lot of seniors love to grow things, don't they? Well, these plants all belong to the seniors here. It's kind of a community effort. And as I said, they'll be growing their seedlings here because this spring we're planting a vegetable garden for them that has plumbing and the barn for all the equipment. And they can grow their own vegetables and flowers this summer. So there's no limit. There's just no limit. Beautiful plants. Yep. Isn't this neat? And it's year round. And we also have painting classes in this room for the residents. So that works out very well. I, I just want our viewers to know that a train did come by. The minute we walked out of that room, a little engine and one car came chugging by before Calvin could get the camera up. But, you know, things kind of worked out. Just to get a little perspective here, we're not very far away from the from the bike path, the walking path down here that the city opened in recent years that people 
really love. Last Saturday, as we're taping this and early in March, the temperature reached 64 degrees. And this was one busy place with mm -hmm. little kids and big kids and senior citizens on their uh, roller blades and so on. But the railroad tracks are right adjacent to that and right over the bank is our greatest lake of all, mm -hmm. Lake Champlain, and Vermont on the other side. So yeah, it is a pretty special spot. It is nice. On the other side of this greenhouse is our activities room where we're having um, our Dinner with a View series, which is dinner and an artistic presentation to follow. And we do that every Thursday night, third th I'm sorry, every third Thursday night. And uh, we have dinner with probably 120 people in the dining room. We move into the activities room and we have multimedia presentations by um, Sean Heffernan, we've had Adirondack Brass, Eileen Egan Mack, and we'll be having the Barbershop Quartet in here. So uh, that's another series that people should look forward to seeing in the newspaper. As I said, every Thursday night, dinner, and some kind of artistic performance to follow. This is, uh, all of this is by way of letting some of our younger viewers know that seniors these days don't just like to sit in that rocking chair they like to have things going on and just look at what we've seen so far today exactly seniors today want um, a DSL line for their computer <laughs> and uh, that needs serious consideration yeah. when we're doing construction of our duplexes in our apartments so that they can email friends and family and do their surfing on the net not what you would have thought maybe 10 years ago. No, not for myself either. And it's amazing how many seniors do correspond with me via email from all over the country. They'll start with a, either with a something small like web TV working through their television set and then they'll get a good computer mm -hmm. and they'll spend a lot of time there and it puts them in of, contact with the world. A lot of the people that live in the two-bedroom apartments actually use that other um, bedroom as their den for their computer station. So mm -hmm. there's a ton of computers here, a ton of pianos, organs, instruments, uh, a lot of very talented people who are still uh, working in the arts or whatever their profession was, they're still participating in that in some way. So retirement living goes on and on, and so does the activity level. I'd love certainly. to hear some of the music and see some of the artwork sometime. Maybe you can invite We us. do have an art show. Every year we have an art show. It's called the Hometown Art Show. Wow, for Hometown Come back, oh, yes, that be, come that back. That would be kind of good. Yes. When, when, I wonder when it's going to be. In... It's normally in late fall. We got time, Calvin. Mm. You got time to plan. You could do oh. a little finger painting in between. The the artwork is overwhelming. I was flabbergasted. Beautiful paintings, oils, waters, uh, some of the quilting, the knitting, needlework, sculpting, it, uh, photography. I and it came out of these apartments, and it was like a secret, a hidden secret. It's amazing, it's just a, amazing. It's a treasure trove. Yes, here, it is. It really, it really is. It really is of of human nature different kinds of personalities. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the cross-section of people that we interviewed at that table a few minutes ago, I'm always inspired after doing one of those shows. Yeah. It's great. You know, uh, one time I was giving a tour, and I said, and there's somebody snowshoeing up that hill. And then I went, oh, that's one of our residents. He, and it was Len running up the hill with his <laughs> snowshoes. I mean, he just shocked me to death. It was amazing. He is an amazing guy, and that's why he's lived to be right. 91 years yes, old. Yes. You know, I, when you were talking to me and telling us when the camera wasn't on that your uncle Earl Joe Carpenter owned a huge house where, what building is located now? It's his wife that grew up in the, where the Kehoe building oh, is. It was a 17 room home right there at Ruger and Broad. Can you imagine a 17 room home right at in that Plattsburgh. intersection? Yeah. Don't you, I wish we could have had Earl on tape. I know, I know. We always say that after the fact, but what a fascinating guy. Oh, and what? extremely brilliant, extremely talented, and uh, a wonderful uncle. But he was, he invented all kinds yes, of A stuff. dust valve, a dust valve for Platco, and it was worldwide that it was distributed and known. He'd have people calling him from all over the world for that invention uh, here in Plattsburgh, New York. And he made it to, how old was he now? He died 91. fairly recently, 91. 91, right. And he was in pretty good shape he right up until shape. just before he died. He got yes. pneumonia, unfortunately. Yeah, mm -hmm. didn't last long. But yeah, still cooking, yeah. The end of an era, huh? Yes, the end of an era. Okay, Carmen, where are we going to go next? Let's go look at a duplex. Okay, let's do it.
All right, we're walking down one of the wings, and you just started to say you have how many apartments in each wing? We have 11 apartments in each wing with a coin-free laundry centrally located. The hallways are lit 24 hours a day. The railings come all the way down. Here's a, a central exit and then an oh. exit at the end. And uh, each wing kind of becomes a neighborhood. Uh, so there are four neighborhoods at Lake Forest and uh, 44 apartments. And right now we're going to go look at a two-bedroom apartment. Oh, that's terrific. It, it looks like a luxury hotel. Really I know. That's nice, what a lot of it? the families say and a lot of the residents say. We try and keep it that way, too. And as we're recording this in early 2002, this building is, what, about two years old, yes, I think? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a two-bedroom apartment. All right. Beautifully decorated. Okay, look at this. We provide the appliances, uh, the refrigerator and the stove, and maintain them. Each room is individually uh, controlled for heating and air conditioning. There are phone jacks in each room and also uh, cable access in each room. So they can be on cable TV in all three rooms if they like. The um, services provided in here are linen service every week we do housekeeping every other week and then we provide the main meal of the day water sewer electric and cable tv are paid for also you don't even have to mow your own lawn no or wash your windows <laughs> <laughs> or plow the snow or worry about who's going to take care of that next fixer up or that's all taken care of by us now that's that's true everywhere in the property yes it is it's true in the duplexes as well as up here and uh, liability insurance is taken care of, the activity schedule is provided, and then we have scheduled transportation to and from doctor's appointments, the dentist, wherever someone would need to go in the city, we'll take them there and pick them up. So it truly is carefree retirement living. Well, let me see. I think we can make it here by Tuesday. With <laughs> Come and have dinner with us on Thursday night. The, the public is open to our room with a view, our dinner with a view series, so please come and join us. Okay. Next, um, next we are going to take a ride. <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, uh, next, we are going to take a ride and look at... Uh, the duplexes. The duplexes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I lied, but I often lie. We haven't left yet. We just want to look down the hallway. We want to sneak previews in the bedrooms and everywhere. Really spacious. I don't Very know how many spacious. square feet in one of these, but... Pretty, pretty 900 big. square feet in the two-bedroom apartment, no right? Kidding. One of our residents has her baby grand piano in the living room you and uses care. the central uh, bedroom as her den. Yeah, so Sorry. everything's very indi individually um, decorated, and we provide the sheer curtains so they can bring in their uh, matching curtains that go with their decor. You know, it's important that we uh, mention that people who come here can maintain their independence. We said that in the very oh, certainly. very beginning, and that's very important as people grow older. You know, they, certainly. Do, they have different ideas about how they want to appoint their, their places, and they can do it here. Yes, they're free to decorate as they please, and um, obviously she's done a beautiful job. Oh, this is great. We snuck in here, and she's not here right no, now. No, she's playing uh, bridge right now. Oh. <laughs> Oh, but she'll see this on television yes. saying, now why did you show my bathroom on television? This is really, really quite nice. nice. Yes, very elegant. And I remember those of you who might have uh, viewed this program when we first came here, we saw an apartment precisely like this, mm -hmm. but not fully appointed like this. So it's great to come back and do chapter two. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for coming. Hmm, I can hear a little mobile in the background as the winds blow through Lake Forest here on the shores of Lake Champlain in March of 2002. We're starting a series of programs about alternative living places for senior citizens in the North Country, and a good place to start is Lake Forest, independent living on the shores of Lake Champlain, property that was part of uh, former Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And uh, this is one of the duplex units, right? Yes, Arnie? it is. I uh, can't wait to get you inside. It's beautiful inside. Now, so there's a, a, somebody owns 93 and somebody owns 91. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then as you progress around the block, we've got a total of 18 homes here. The style that I'm showing you today is a B style, which is a more open concept in the living room and in the dining room. But um, each duplex has its own washer, dryer, uh, refrigerator, stove, garbage disposal, and dishwasher, and they all have two bedrooms, two bathrooms, the living room, the kitchen, the dining area, and the attached garage. Oh, no, I, 
Some of this old, this is the older housing from the former Plattsburgh Air Force Base down That's that right. way. Mm -hmm. I think most of that is going to be torn down, isn't it? Eventually, so, yes. Yeah. Uh, if we do go into phase two with new construction, we would start over there with demolition and then put some duplexes up over there. So they'd be looking out over our multi-million dollar view here. Lake Forest City Grove. Yes, yes. That's terrific. Okay, let's go inside. And you thought we'd never get here. Well, we are inside the duplex now, and a nice one it is. Carmen, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing. Well, right now we're in the living room, and this is the B-style duplex with a more open concept. The uh, dining room and the living room just flow together very nicely. They've opted to have their kitchen open into the dining room, and uh, they also have a study and a deck off the back. Um, the, the study is an option in the B-style duplex, which they've added on. Let's and for them, way, yeah. it, it is a, a living... Well, we can take a look in there maybe as we... As we step over it's a way. TV room, computer room, and as I mentioned before, computers are very important in this community. Uh, we do have people here with DSL lines who are very much into computers, so cable access is provided in the duplex, liability insurance, water, sewer. We maintain the building inside and out. The appliances are maintained by us. If there's a problem with the roof, the air conditioning, you call me, and I have it taken care of for you. So, so you're going to come right over here with your wrench, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the kitchen with a pantry, a washer-dryer combination, and then the appliances. Outside is a deck, uh, which is gorgeous in the summertime. And then if you went around the other side, we'd be seeing the two bedrooms and the two bathrooms with a tub and shower and a step-in shower, which I think is important. The showers here at Lake Forest have a five-inch step into them for ease of egress. Okay. So, yeah. Yes, handicap accessibility is a necessity in case someone were to end up in a wheelchair or be using a walker. Um, it's very easy to get around because everything at Lake Forest is on one floor. And m most of these now, most of the other ones of this style would be essentially the same. Essentially the same. The floor mm -hmm. plan, and then but there's a whole nother kind. You said this is there, the, this is the B style. The, B. the the A style distinguishes itself from this one by having a very distinct living room, a separate dining room and a separate kitchen, where this seems to flow from one room to another without the walls. So that would be the difference. Uh, the same thing with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, all the appliances, the attached garage, a deck in the back, and um, privacy from your neighbor. Most uh, most of the residents here have always reported that they don't even hear the neighbor next door, so you really feel like you've got a home alone, even though it's attached next door at the garage. Yeah. It's, it's called having your cake and eating it, too. It sure it's, is. You have the best of all worlds, don't you? Exactly, and when these people leave to go on holiday, I'm the one that looks in and makes sure everything's maintained and hasn't, hasn't had any disturbance, so they can leave and leave for months at a time and know that their place is taken care of. That's good, too. The security aspect of it, mm -hmm. I think, would be important. Can we see some of the other rooms? Sure. Let's go okay. and look at the bedrooms. All right. Okay. We moved into the spacious bathroom. Here. Very spacious bathroom, and some of the people actually put a lot more furniture in it than these folks have. This is the guest bathroom. If we move around, we'll be going to the master bedroom with its attached bathroom. Again, very large bathroom and large bedroom with a lot of closet space. That's great. Okay, walk out and I'll follow you around. Oh boy, look at this, huh? Bedroom. Plenty of closet space, and then the guest room next door has a very large walk-in closet, and their master bath is right here around the corner, so it's right off their master bedroom. Plenty of room. Okay, and we might as well see the whole place as long as we're going to do the... Oh, look at, look at this. <laughs> I feel like voyeurs here. Look at this. Isn't this great? Beautiful twin beds and uh, plenty of room. You could have a king-size bed in here yes. if you wanted to, yes. couldn't you? Yep, and there's phone access in each room and cable access in each room. Individually controlled heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So That's wonderful. How many square feet now in here this would you guys? This one is 1,100, a little over 1,100 square feet. A lot of, lot of people in, in full-size homes don't have any more than that, do they? No. I think it's the design in these that gives them a, a spacious feeling yeah. because I don't think you feel like it's 1,100. I think it feels bigger than that. I really do. Yeah. Feels good to me. Yep. Let's see if I can come here to lunch sometime. <laughs> 
bed the grass. All right, we're we're on the deck and we're using our imaginations now. We'll picture a, let maybe say August seventh, the green grass and you said there's going to be a progressive dinner. Well, I think they should have a progressive dinner. They've certainly talked about it. Uh, you can see where we have um, 16 homes here, and they could literally walk from one backyard deck to another and have champagne at one, caviar at the other, and finish dinner around the circle So and never leave the backyard. I, I think it's a great idea. I can't believe how many units have been built in the last year here. Last summer, we built, built 12 uh, brand new homes, and we have a total of 18 homes out here now much more than I ever thought we'd have last summer I thought I'd have a probably three new homes go up and we ended up with 12 it just blew up so um, it's been wonderful it's been a wonderful experience and very lovely families in here yeah I love it out here boy I'll tell you we got it we got to get to know some of these people out here Calvin guarantee this is really quite beautiful Hopefully our viewers will get to be watching this program many years into the future. And I hope I will make sure that some people I know who used to be stationed here in Plattsburgh Air Force Base can get a look at it now. You'll have to be very aware of where the camera is panning so you can remember landmarks because this property where we're standing doesn't really look like it looked five years ago, that's for sure. It's an amazing metamorphosis that's been taking place on this beautiful piece of property not far from Route 9, just south of Plattsburgh, at the site of the former Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Um, and we haven't, we don't know where the end of Lake Forest is going to be, do we, Carmen? That's the fun of it. That is the fun of it. I, I'm not sure uh, where we're going, but the, the future here is certainly bright. We've been much more successful than we ever dreamed of being. We've built far more duplexes than we planned and filled the main building much faster than we ever anticipated. So it has been a tremendous success, and I look forward to the future with it. Yeah, some people years ago thought Plattsburgh had seen almost all the growth it was going to see. Plattsburgh Air Force Base was secure and would be here, would en enlarge its mission and stay here forever and ever and ever. And that curtain came down. Mm -hmm. But when a curtain goes down, another curtain goes up. It's what people said when I left the radio business. One door closes and another door opens. Exactly. And here we are several years later talking about Lake Forest. It's amazing. Well, you know, earlier you were talking about the folks who uh, were born and raised in this area. And I think uh, reminisce about this area. And Lake Forest now offers them the opportunity to retire in this area and be at home with their friends, their family, their churches, their synagogues, their um, physicians and so retirement living and aging in place can take place right here on the beautiful shores of Lake Champlain. How, you know something I didn't ask you because uh, we didn't have an opportunity we're too busy seeing things. How big a staff does Lake Forest have to maintain all of this property? Uh, I have a staff of 18. I have maintenance people, resident assistants, cooks, uh, administrative people, uh, an activities director, and uh, I have probably one of the best staffs I've ever worked with in my professional life. They are kind, considerate, very professional, and I think the world of them. Well, you had the pleasure of putting that staff together. <laughs> yes, I did, and I'm very it's, proud of them. It's nice to pick your own team. Yes, you know? it is. <laughs> are most of the people who work for you from this area originally? Not all of them are from the area originally, but most of them are. Some of them are retired military. Are they really? Yes. yes. Now, isn't that ironic and wonderful? Yes. They, they worked here for years, and in their retirement, come back to work for me part-time. So it works out perfectly. I see they've maintained the, the street names. Are you Will you ever be changing the names of these streets that come through here, do you I think? I doubt it. I don't see any reason to. Nevada I mean, Oval is Nevada, Nevada Oval. Nevada Oval and Ohio. Nevada Oval is Nevada mm -hmm. Oval. I think you've just said a mouthful, and it will be forever and ever, no matter what you called it after that. And this, in the summertime, imagine what this is like in the summertime with these, these rolling slopes around us and the bridge across the railroad tracks behind Calvin. I'm sure he's already taken a look at that. We've uh, walked across that bridge many times and down on the waterfront and families go down there and picnic in the summertime. And it has a, a resort feeling in the summertime because the chairs are out on the patio, picnics are taking place, people are walking, bicycling, and then there are several generations out here playing on the lawn. So it really does develop like a resort um, atmosphere. 
It's really great. Carmen, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to come in here, take you an hour or so out of, right out of the middle of your day to show us Lake Forest. It's been a tremendous pleasure uh, to know you and your family for all these years, and we wish you the best of good fortune here at Lake Forest in the future. Thank you very much. Come back and see us again. <clears throat> you know we will, especially if there's food cooking like there was when we walked in here at 1 o'clock today. Who knows where we're going to be next time for our little corner. It's Saturday, the 26th day of July, 2003. This is Calvin Castein. We're in the park at the Four Corners near the Crossroads, world famous, internationally known Crossroads restaurant and motel. Beautiful downtown Moira, New York. We're at Route 11 in the Dickinson Moira Road or the Moira Dickinson Road.